This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. DNS stands for Domain Naming System, and it's super critical to email. In fact, without it, email wouldn't work properly. It's basically the way the email gets from the sender to the receiver. Now, on a DNS server, there are records and different record types. There are two that are critical to email, the A record and the MX record. So let's take a look at a DNS server. Okay, I'm on a DNS server here, PHXDC01. Let's go to Tools, launch our DNS. We have forward lookup zones and reverse lookup zones. Forward lookup zones generally translate a domain name to an IP address. But we can also do all sorts of other things in forward lookup zones with different record types. Then we have reverse lookup zones. Those pretty much always translate an IP address into a domain name, and that's kind of all a reverse lookup zone does. So again, a forward lookup zone does all kinds of things with all kinds of different record types. So we've got our forward lookup zones. We've got two in particular here that we're concerned with, itdvds.com and itdvds.local. We can think of a zone as a domain name, like itdvds.com, and everything in this zone, all the records, have to do with the itdvds.com domain. If I highlight itdvds.local, these are all the records for itdvds.local domain. For example, down here, we see an A record. We see the type of record is an A record, chidc03. So this name here translates to this IP address. And because we're in the itdvds.local zone, the fully qualified domain name is chidc03. ITDVDs.local. So when somebody types that in to a browser or pings it or something like that, it translates to this IP address. So if I scroll down a bit here, I've got an A record here for PHX Exchange 01. The fully qualified name domain name is PHX Exchange 01.itdvds.local, and that translates to 192.168.6.105. So that's how a domain name gets translated into an IP address with an A record. And then there's this quad A record. This has to do with IP version 6, but it does the same thing. It translates a domain name into an IP version 6 address. So now let's take a look at an MX record or a mail exchanger record. You can see here I've got a mail exchanger set up. What it does is it specifies the mail server for a domain. I'm just going to create a new MX record just so we can take a look at it a little bit better. New mail exchanger record or MX record. Here we're going to specify the host or child domain. Now we leave this blank if the domain is itdvds.com and that's what we're working with with our email. The domain is everything after the at sign. So if the email address is joe at gmail.com, gmail.com is the domain name. If it's Chris at itdvds.com, then itdvds.com is the domain name. Now we can also have child domains like, let's say, corp. So we have corp.itdvds.com. So in that case, the email address would be joe at corp.itdvds.com. But we're not working with that. We're going to work with just itdvds.com. So we'll leave this host or child domain blank. Down here is the fully qualified domain name of the mail server. So we're specifying Okay, if somebody sends an email to joe at itdvds.com, where should that email be sent? What is the mail server for itdvds.com? So we browse, and we could type it in as well, or we can browse to, let's say, itdvds.local. And if I expand this out here, PHX Exchange 01 is the name of our mail server. So I'll go ahead and click OK, and it adds the fully qualified domain name, which is phxexchange01.itdvds.local. Next, we have a mail server priority. This is how we can have multiple mail servers for the same domain. So if I've got two mail servers for itdvds.com, I can give each MX record a certain priority. And the lower the number, the higher the priority. So if... I have this mail server at priority of 10, and then I have another 
mail server, let's say PHX Exchange 02 that I create another MX record for with a priority of 20, it's going to send to PHX Exchange 01 first. So another mail server that's trying to send email to this mail server, it's going to try this one first. If it can't contact it, then it's going to contact the one with the next lowest priority, which is the higher number, so the 20. So then it's going to contact PHX Exchange 02.itdvds.local. And we can also have multiple MX records with the same priority. So I could have two MX records, both with a priority of 10. Then what would happen is the mail server that's trying to send the email would just select one randomly to use. So some mail servers would select PHX Exchange 01. Some mail servers would select PHX Exchange 02. So you'd get some load balancing there. So just to recap, a mail server, let's say Gmail's mail server, is trying to find the itdvds.com mail server in order to send an email to it. It's going to find its MX record. The MX record is going to specify the domain name, the fully qualified domain name of the mail server that will receive the email for the itdvds.com domain. It's going to use the A record of the mail server that's returned by the MX record in order to get the IP address. So if we went down here, we would see PHX Exchange 01. Here's the IP address. So now it knows the IP address of the mail server for the itdvds.com domain.